All right, y'all, Papa Pepper here. Welcome back once again. I'm doing some dinner prep, but there's a video that I've been wanting to get out for you guys. Kind of mentioned it in the last video. I'll put a card up here if you guys are interested in checking out. Um, but I figured while I'm making this dinner for the family and we're taking just some little potatoes we've got in our garden. Some of them are some golden spuds, some of them are some baby reds. And I'm starting off with a bed of that. Um, but I thought I'd grab the moment to talk with you all too. Um, and just talk a little bit about parenting, kind of how and why we do what we do. And I believe that that has thus far proven wise and we've gotten a pretty good return on our parenting investment. Now the first thing I want to say is that anyone can pretty much, you know, become a dad. Uh, any male can pretty much become a dad. But to actually be a father, I'm going to say, is a different category. It involves a little more than just simply mm, giving a woman the opportunity to birth a child. Um, do you have more of those ready? Yes. Can I get them right now? Yes. <clears throat> that said, um, I want to say that I was a dad for years before I really allowed my heart to be turned towards my children. And um, I'm going to start off just with kind of some of my failure. You know, to be honest, sure I was a dad, but I hadn't really embraced that part of my life. I didn't really have a, I wouldn't say I was a bad dad, but I didn't really have a, a true heart for it. It wasn't until I'd been a dad for, oh, I don't know, I think it was four years maybe, three or four years. And at that point we already had three, at least three, because <laughs> our children, before we had our third child, our for, well, when we had our third child, our first wasn't even three yet. So we had three children in less than three years, one at a time, and then we had another one a bit after that. And um, we'd gone to a, a meeting at somebody's house, and they told us we could sit on a couch. And we went and sat on the couch, me, my wife, and our children. There had to be three or four, at least three, possibly four. Exact number doesn't matter. What matters is it was ridiculous. Everyone's trying to be kind of calm and cool and collected and peaceful and it was a rather kind of somber ambiance. Um, not a lot of excitement per se. And my children were just crazy. They're screaming, they're bouncing all over the couch, they're just making a ruckus. At some point, I kind of like uh, quietly encourage Mama Pepper like, yo, we better, you know, why don't you move a couple of these extra noisy ones to the next room? She goes to the next room, next thing that happens, you can hear the piano being banged away on. And I'm like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. And that was one of the things that happened to me that made me realize, you know what? I'm not doing a very good job at all. My children are rather unruly. They're quite um, boisterous. They're, I mean, you know, I know that kids are kids and other things, but they should be able to sit quietly for a bit if we tell them to sit quietly for a bit. If we tell them, shh, they should be able to, shh, you know, that shouldn't be beyond them. Uh, maybe you disagree. I certainly don't. I had also passed through a guy's house and um, it just so happens he has 14 children. And he wasn't home at the time, but his wife was. And his wife was, you know, home alone with the 14 children. And we passed in, showed up like one afternoon, spent the night, woke up the next day, and then continued on our way. We were passing through uh, where they lived on a cross-country trip from Wisconsin to Texas, back to Wisconsin. So I remember I was in a hot tub in New Braunfels, uh, Texas, gave him a call, said, hey, uh, we're gonna be passing by, can we uh, stop in? And the lady was like, yeah, you know, my husband's not home, but you know, if, you, if your family wants to come through, sure. And uh, I realized as well at that point that I was closer <laughs> to being at their house when I'm at home than back in Wisconsin than when I'm sitting down there in Texas. So when I showed up, you know, this man was not home. But the evidence of his labor and investment in his children was. 
and I realized, you know, this was about the same time as another event. I'm like, something is missing in my life. Something's missing in my parenting, and um, I've got to I've got to figure this stuff out. Now, one cool thing is, if you're actually able to observe people's lives, it gives you a chance to look into their interaction with their wives, with their children, and see things that you wouldn't normally see if you weren't watching them live life. So, he obviously wasn't home at the time, but I realized something was different, so I kind of began to search and figure. And one thing I will say, just so you guys are aware, I'll be upfront and honest, uh, we try to base our life on what we see in Scripture, in the Bible. My friend in St. Louis, same story. Um, so around that same time, I came across the end of Deuteronomy, in chapter 32, verses 45, 46, and 47, and pretty much it says to set your heart on God's commands and to command your children to do so is not a vain thing for you. It's your life. And I thought, you know what? I've got a lot getting in the way of my life. So at that point, I began kind of this reevaluation of where I was at as a parent. Um, definitely was a parent. Had children. My peppers are doing horrible this year. <laughs> and um, would you rinse this for me, quick? Yeah. Catch. Yeah. Close. Um, a woodchuck nibbled down a bunch of them, so that made me sad. And I'll leave that back in like 30 seconds or less. Um, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So I realized I had a lot of things getting in the way of my life, and. Um, it's interesting too, near the end of the Old Testament in Malachi, it talks about Elijah coming to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers. And I think that that's responsive. I think that first, when the father's heart turns towards his children, then in response, the children's hearts would turn to their fathers. Um, that's the way I believe it at the moment. That happened to me probably about 2014 when I finally allowed him. I got smacked pretty hard looking at the way my life was going uh, pertaining to my children, looking at the way they were behaving and you know, they weren't really behaving so you could see the way they were misbehaving <laughs> and how things were going and I, I began a deep kind of reevaluation of everything. Since then, I've realized that you know, my personal identity is who I am to my God, who I am to my wife, and who I am to my children, in that order. I know there's a lot of people who try to put themselves first. I know there's a lot of people who try to put uh, their children before their spouse. I know there's a lot of people who don't really want anything to do with God. That's obviously their, uh, their free choice. But for me, it goes God, wife, then children. And kind of embracing that identity and realizing you know, who I am in these different relationships trumps everything else in my life. Since then, it's been an interesting walk. I'm going to insert a little footage in this one because I want to show you evidence that um, it's like ingrained into me part way now as I've embraced this, that it just kind of comes out naturally to a degree. That's really cool. And I had gone on a trip with Pinkie Pepper down the Buffalo River in Arkansas and she'd never been kayaking on moving water so as we were doing this um, I had to teach her the cool thing was in the editing process of the video I could see a natural progression I'm gonna roll those clips for you right now and then I'll give you some commentary
So what we have going on there is that the first thing I did was I showed her. I said, here, follow me. I'm gonna head through these rapids. I want you to follow me. I'd keep an eye on her, but I would have her follow me through that situation. Then, and I didn't realize I was doing this, you know, when I did it. I realized it in the editing process and just kind of like, wow, that's, that's awesome. Then I told her what to do. I would say here, you know, go left, go right. Here's the best way to pick a path, go. And I began supervising her as I told her where to go and what to do. Then I turned her loose, still under my supervision, but I said, you pick a path and I'll follow you. And I was letting her then, after having followed me for a while, and then also after having um, had me told her which path to pick, I began letting her choose her own path, and I was still there supervising her, you know, as backup in case she made a bad decision, you know, I could be there to help. But it was kind of the natural progression of things where you first tell someone what to do. Or you first, yeah, tell them and show them. You know, then you kind of let them do it and you just kind of tell them how to do it. And then you allow them to do it and you watch them and make sure that they're doing it right. Um, that is a wonderful way to learn. A lot of people are hands-on learners that learn by doing. Even if you can pick up the skill um, from a textbook or from, you know, watching somebody do something until you can really, A, do it. You haven't really mastered it and until you can really teach someone, you know, there's not really the evidence per se that you've done. And that's one thing that's been really good. Um, I'm going to link a video called Don't Discourage the Children. I'll put it up over here. If you're serious about parenting, that's something we learned a while ago, and um, we stand by it. It's pretty much that young children are very eager to help, but they can't. They're too little. But that heart is right. They want to be there. They want to help. They want to be involved. So when we can keep that heart going and allow them to participate at some level, then they get the skills a lot earlier because they've been able to interact in some degree ahead of time. But then also... Um, they still want to help as they grow older. A lot of times, children want to help, and they say, no, you're too little, children want to help. No, you're too weak, Ch children want to help. It's like, no, you, you can't do this yet. And then by the time they're big enough to help, they have no more desire. That little heart within them was crushed. I'll, I'll link that video, you guys can check it out. I already put it up there. It'll be in a pinned comment too. But even watching my previous video about why we gave up on quail again, you know, people watched that and they pointed out how, wow, Monster Truck is sitting there teaching Bugger how to butcher quail. You know, Monster Truck is eight, Bugger is four, and the eight-year-old is teaching the four-year-old how to butcher quail. I don't have to teach my four-year-old. You know why? Because my eight-year-old knows how, and he's willing to do it. So it's very cool, too. Like, we're constantly living a life together. I'll probably get into some more of that. Um... People are basically like those who they hang out with most and that gives me a lot of incentive to be the type of person I would like my children to grow up and become. But it also um, gives me a great desire to invest in them a lot more than I, I, I normally would. Very interesting. We, we live a life together for a number of reasons, but it's very cool that as I learn things in my late 30s and 40s, as we kind of change up our lifestyle to what we're doing now, my children get to learn it when they're two, three, four, ten, eleven, whatever it may be. And because we learn so much life together, they have a, they have a desire and a passion to learn and to understand and to gain information. And when they do that, they have a desire to share. I saw this very clearly as well when I went and visited uh, Ethan from 180 degrees from average. His two oldest children caught me munching on some wild edibles. They're like, hey, what did you do it? So I was showing them sassafras. I was showing them a common yellow wood sorrel. I was showing them green briar, and I was giving them some disclaimers and telling them some stuff. But immediately they wanted to run and show their dad and teach him too. They wanted to pick some and take it back to their mom to show her too. Um, that kind of handing on the baton of information, of teaching and helping to train. And that's one thing that's really interesting too is that when you have multiple children spread out over an age, 
the the little boys who have littler boys underneath them kind of learn to become little fathers. The little girls who have littler girls underneath them kind of learn to become little mothers. And they're able to, if you train those first ones well, they're able to spend a lot of time training those other ones as well. And it's just amazing the whole way that the thing works together. But part of this is we all fall short, we all fail, we can all just be a parent without truly being, you know, a mother or a father, without really having our hearts turned to our children. If we allow the Lord to work in us in such a way that it becomes our identity, He can teach us and train us how to invest in their lives, how to interact with them, how to set that good example in a way that's going to hopefully have a generational effect. I don't look forward to this weekend. You know what I mean? Not that I don't look forward to the weekend, but I'm, I'm, my thoughts are beyond it. I'm planning for the future of my children and my children's children. And one of the best gifts I can give my children's children, one of the best gifts I can give my grandchildren, is who I teach and train my actual children to be. That's huge. And most people don't even consider it. So I have a huge responsibility in the example that I set, the way that I invest my time, and even right now, there's a couple of them very intently listening to me. I've got these little eyes looking at me off camera. And uh, I think they understand a lot of what I'm saying from the way that we live life out. So that's kind of part of uh, some encouragement I want to give. I'll get into some more practical things as we move on. Um, but people have asked me to make some stuff about teaching and training children. I thought this would be a good place to start. I'll also have some little cards off to the side of some previous videos that are worth looking into on this subject as well. But I will see you guys next time. Be blessed. Papa out. Thank you for watching.